In this video, I'm going to walk you through how you can mine adventure coin using mobile devices like cell phones and tablets. Recently, adventure coin launched and I love this coin uh, for specific reasons that are kind of unrelated to crypto and making money. Just in general, I'm a big fan of the coin, what they're doing, what they stand for. I will cover that in a different video, but uh, one of the awesome things about adventure coin is it's running on a variant of yes power and you can mine it on cell phones and i've been running it for about a day or two now and it works actually really well the efficiency is on par with my ryzen's so i'm going to walk you through how you can get it up and running and uh, it's going to be very similar if you guys have followed previously i uploaded this uh, easy way to mine Varus on Amazon Fire tablets. The process that we're going to walk through is pretty much identical to that. If you've already followed this video, then there's basically just a single command you'll be able to run, which is uh, over on my GitHub. So I've created this ADVC phone miner repository. And then here, if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see this command. If you've already followed the Varus video, you can actually just run this command and get it up and running. However, if you haven't followed the Varus video and you wanna set up a fresh device, I'm gonna walk you through how to do that today. So we're gonna be working with uh, screen copy. Now this is so that I can mirror the device on the computer. This part is optional, but it does make things a lot easier. And then we're gonna need the Termux app and Termux boot. And I've talked about these in that previous video, but if you haven't seen that, Termux app is basically like a Linux uh, terminal emulator that you can run on Android. So we're gonna be using that. And Termux boot will actually allow you to run the miner if your device ever restarts. So on device boot up, it will actually start the miner for you. So we're using a combination of both of these. Now I'm gonna be sideloading these on my device. However, you can always just go to their GitHub if you're direct on the phone, hop on over to the releases section, and you can download the APK and get it up and running. Uh, but for me, I have a uh, fresh Amazon Fire tablet here. So this is a octa-core 10 inch tablet. So we've already got screen copy running here and I've got Fire Toolbox running. And so I'm just gonna do a couple quick things real quick. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do here, and this is really specific to Fire tablets, but I'm going to uh, disable any lock screen ads. And then I'm going to do a standard D bloat under manage Amazon apps. Just do a standard D bloat here. Go ahead and hit execute. This will only take a second. You'll see some of these apps will uh, disappear as it's running. So it's just cleaning up some of those extra standard apps. Now we're gonna side load Termux and Termux app. So instead of me going on the device and going to the internet browser and going to the GitHub, uh, using Fire Toolbox here, I can just go, um, I've already downloaded both of those APKs. So I'm do the Termux one. And nice thing with this app, we can do multiple at one time. So I'm gonna do Termux boot up, hit side load all. It's gonna go ahead and install both of them. And I'm going to open Termux boot. You just need to open this one time and then you can kind of just dismiss it. Go back to the home screen here. And then we wanna open Termux and we're gonna let this bootstrap itself. And now we can, it's as simple as um, going over to my GitHub and going to that command and copying this whole command. Now, I'm gonna bring up a notepad file real quick and just show you what that command looks like and what you might wanna change. So this is basically gonna run my installer script that will download the miner, compile it on your device and set it up to run. Now, as part of that setup, there are perimeters that you can specify here before you run the command. So you can specify your pool URL here. It's gonna default to my adventure coin pool. I actually run a adventure coin solo mining pool. So it's gonna default to that if you don't change this. Uh, this is going to be your wallet address, uh, password for the pool if it requires one, 
And this is very important. This is going to be the number of threads your device supports. So if we hop back on over and we run a LS CPU, we can see that this device has eight CPUs, meaning we can run eight. So we're going to go ahead and just copy that whole thing again. Come over here. We're going to do a control V. It's going to paste all that in. We're going to hit enter. And this is going to take uh, maybe five minutes or so, but this is going to go through download and install any dependencies, download the miner from my GitHub repo and compile it on your device. Uh, and then it's going to set it up. Uh, for the miner to actually start hashing. So just be patient with it, and we're going to let this finish running. Once it's done, it, it's basically going to tell you that the miner is up and running. So if we do a screen dash R uh, space miner, we can see that it has already started up and it's connected to the pool. We don't have any accepted shares yet but we're gonna let this just sit and run for about a minute. And then we should start to see some accepted chairs. We're getting a few accepted chairs now. And if we take a look, so I know the screen's a little bit small here. If I just uh, pinch and zoom on the device, we can go ahead and zoom in there. And what you're gonna notice is our hash rate is right around 190 hashes per second. So how does that compare to uh, some other devices? So I'm gonna hop on over to my MMPOS instance. And we're gonna take a look at a few devices that we've got running. <coughs> Knowing that we're getting essentially uh, 800, or sorry, 180 hashes per second and about five watts. Uh, if we take a look at Miner Blade 2, this is actually a Xeon, and this is a 8-core uh, 16-thread mobile Xeon. So this actually is a uh, mobile processor. So if we look here, it's a Xeon E2286M. So this is indeed a 8-core uh, 16-thread Xeon uh, mobile, so it doesn't consume a lot of power. Uh, but what you can see is we get 600 hashes a second at 34 watts. So how does that extrapolate? If we take, uh, let's see here, if we take 600 divided by 34, so we're essentially getting 17 hashes per watt. If we times that by five, that is essentially 88, 88 hashes per second uh, at five watts. But on our mobile device, we're getting 180, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, so it's going between 180 and 190. So we're actually doing like double this in efficiency on our device, both efficiency and, you know, uh, because of uh, the hash rates on these, you're going to notice these are actually like quite low. And I'm going to show you when I look at Ryzen's, you're going to kind of see the same thing. So if we scroll down here, I've got some uh, Ryzen's running. So this one is actually running a Ryzen 5 5500, which is a six core, 12 thread, and it's only getting 774. Now it's only pulling 22 watts. This is something very important to keep an eye on. Uh, now this is software numbers. Uh, so this isn't truly accurate at the wall uh, where the phone really is at five watts only while it's charging. So. And if we take this one as an example, do 774 divided by 22, you're looking at about uh, 35 per watt times that by five, that's 175. So that's kind of right on par with what we're getting from the mobile device. So we're basically looking at the efficiency of a mid-tier Ryzen uh, 5000 series CPU with the device, which is awesome. And this is a Amazon Fire Tablet device. Uh, again, eight core. It's a Cortex A53, I believe. And so we're basically getting that hash. Now, if we hop on over, uh, I've actually been running uh, a few here, you can see. So uh, these are two independent devices. They're actually the same tablet, two other ones I'm running. 
and the one we're actually averaging around 244 hashes per second on that one and then 160. So this is going to fluctuate a little bit. Uh, obviously, it is going to depend on Silicon Lottery with the processors. But that kind of gives you an idea of what the efficiency looks like. Uh, personally, I am moving uh, my entire tablet farm over to a venture coin. Uh, but that's it for this video. I'm not going to talk about venture coin too much. I may cover that in another video. But for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to get, show you guys how you can get up and running adventure coin on pretty much any ARM device. Uh, it does need to be an ARM V8 processor. So 64-bit uh, similar to Varus. 64-bit. Uh, I may look and see if I can make it work on a 32-bit device, but right now it is working great on 64-bit devices. I did test it on a Raspberry Pi 4 as well, and it did work. Uh, the hash rate wasn't super high, but the miner did work on it.